Okay, so I just want to use this video as an opportunity to review some of the keys to scansion. So I've got the first line of the Aeneid here, which is a pretty basic line. It's not that hard to scan, so it'll make a good starting point. And I want to review with you our um, order of things that we're going to do. So step number one is to look for elisions. And elisions happen where the first word in out of two words, because elision happens over two words, when one word ends in a vowel or a vowel plus M, and then the next word starts with a vowel or an H followed by a vowel. So I'm going to go through my line. This is the first step, and I'm going to look at the end of every word and see if it's a vowel. So A is, so I'm going to look at the next word, and I see that that's a consonant, so I can't have an elision. The end of this word is que, ends in an e, but the next word starts with a consonant. This ends in an o, but the next word starts with a consonant. Ae, but the next word starts with a consonant. I, but the next word starts with a consonant. S is a consonant, B is a consonant. I don't have to think about the last syllable because there's not another one after it on the line. So I have no elisions. So my next step is to find the longs. So, things can be long either by nature, which means that this syllable is always long. So, for example, the long I in hink meaning here, or the long O of the, of the first person singular verb ending, you know, your O from OST must descent, or um, the long E in the perfect stem for the verb to come, when you're a -e wainy, that's a nice long E. Those kind of things are long by nature. Also long by nature are diphthongs, which are combinations of two vowels that get pronounced as one sound. So a good example would be on this word right here, we say troy I. So that O-I gets pronounced together, troy, and then the A-E, I, gets pronounced together. So those are diphthongs. And we also have long by position. Long by position, is when the vowel is followed, any vowel is followed by two true consonants. And we learned that, for example, a T, a D, a P, a B, a G, and a C, followed by an R or an L, that that did not count as, a con as two consonants, just as one. That's a stop plus a liquid. We also learned that it doesn't count when there's an H involved, because that's not really a consonant. And we learned that on Q-U, that that cluster always comes together, and the Q-U together counts as one consonant. So this U does not actually function as a vowel. It creates one consonant sound in conjunction with the U. So that's kind of like one consonant written as two letters. Um, so take a moment, pause the video, write down this line, and find all of the longs. All right, so you at this point should have written down this line, paused the video, and found all of the longs. So let's go through and see how we did. I know that this A is long right here because it's followed by two consonants, the R and the M. I know this A, I'm not sure because it's just followed by one consonant. This I, not sure. This U is followed by an M and a Q two consonants, so I'm going to mark it long. Que is my next syllable, followed by just one consonant. A is followed by just one consonant. O is followed by TR, but I do remember that final O's are long, so I'm going to mark that as long by nature. Then the OI and the I, we already talked about those are diphthongs, so those are long. On QUI, Final I's are usually long. I'm going to um, hold off on writing it just in case because that's not a 100% of the time rule. And PR doesn't count as a true consonant cluster. It's one consonant, not two, because the R is a liquid. So I'm not sure about this I. It's probably long, though. This I doesn't have to be long. This U doesn't have to be long. This O doesn't have to be long. Neither does this O or this I. But once I start thinking about my feet... I'm going to add in my dactyls. Remember, a dactyl is a long, short, short, and a spondy is a long, long. I do remember that in my pattern, I always have a dactyl 
at, I mean a spondy at the end. So I can go ahead and put in a long and an X right there, the on caps. Then I'm gonna mark my foot break. I also know that the fifth foot is almost always a long, short, short. And since that does fit there, I do have space for that. I know that that's right. I'm gonna go ahead and mark my foot. So now I've got four, two of my six feet figured out. Now looking through the rest of the pattern, if right here I have a long that either needs to be this long or this long right here. So that means that I'd either, to fit in a dactyl, I'd need to have two shorts, but I only have one syllable. So this has to be a spondy, so I'm gonna mark that long. And that means my break comes right here between oi and i. So now I've got, at the end, a spondy, a dactyl, and a spondy. I have a long right here already. There's my other long creating my spondy. And now I've got arm, a, uh, weir, um, que, ka. That was six syllables, but I need two more feet. So six divided by two is three. I must have two dactyls. And I've already got the longs marked for those dactyls, so that makes it really easy to fill in the rest. So that I end up with a dum diddy dum diddy dum 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 diddy dum dum pattern. So arm over room quick no troy yai kri pri musaboris. And that's how you do a basic scansion. So we'll we'll continue practicing with this. We'll continue looking at elisions, but there will not be any elisions on your first scansion quiz. So this is a really nice introduction. If you need practice, which you probably do, remember to get on hexameter.co and practice on there. It might help you to write the lines out on a sheet of paper and scan them instead of trying to do it on the screen. Um, but that's, you know, that's really up to you. You see what works best for you. If you're getting a line wrong, try it again. There's an option to retry the line. And you should do that so that you can figure out how you're messing up and how you can improve. Thank you.